you guys believe we're in October already? <laughs> like, where did the summer go? Awesome, welcome. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in tonight. We'll honor your time. Thank you for showing up. And uh, this is SJREI October meeting. As you know, we have our taglines uh, where the deals happen and you can ask me anything real estate. Our disclaimer, we are here for education and networking opportunities. We do encourage you to do all of your own due diligence. Don't rely on the fact that they're on the stage. Make sure you do your own due diligence. And I'm sure you've heard me say it many times that if you make an investment and make a profit, I'll let you keep it. And if you make an investment and you lose money, I'll let you keep that too. <laughs> so you get both sides. So our mission is to provide education and you know, really to provide you the platform to change your future, you know, make wise and profitable investments. When we did a survey of our, our group, we asked our attendees that were regular attendees if they have done any deals with people in the audience. And we found out that over 78% of the regular attendees have done business together. And that's why we say that this is the group where the deals actually happen. So speaking of deals happening, I want to share with you a recent deal that we were able to put under contract. This is a house in Antioch that is available and uh, for resale. Um, it's a rental or it could be a rental, it could be a flip too, but really I would look at it as buying it for a BRRR. You can see here, it does not need a lot of work. Maybe some light paint, nice and big. So it's five bedrooms, three baths, 2,700 square feet. It's pretty much set up already with a nice backyard patio. If you have interest in this before we list it and put it back out on the MLS, make sure you email me, lori at sjrei.org. Again, that's Lori at sjrei.org. We do have another investment opportunity. This one is a little bit more on the commercial side. And we have the opportunity with at least four properties here. Four million is the purchase price. It is an opportunity zone. So if you're looking for an investment for the opportunity zone, this would qualify. It's 297 unit assisted living. And it's valued very low under market. Um, if this one, if you have interest in this one, you can either email me, Lori, or info at sjrei.org. Make sure that you include your name and phone number so that we can reach out to you. We do have a deadline that we're coming up on on this one. And so we're looking for investment partners to come in on this project. So make sure you include your name and phone number. And we're coming up. Mike, are you ready? <laughs> sure. So we have Mike Hambright on uh, tonight. And I just have to tell you that um, this gentleman comes to you with so much value and so much knowledge. I've known Mike probably, what, eight years, nine years now? It's been a while, yeah. Yeah. And I am part of his Investor Fuel Mastermind. So if you're looking for a mastermind to belong to, it's definitely one to look into. Um, he is the founder of Flip Nerd. Uh, he's done just about everything. He rescues people from home investor franchises. You'll have to ask him about that one. <laughs> he has coached hundreds of individuals, thousands basically indirectly, and is co-founder of Investor Machine, which is a cutting edge lead generation agency. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand this off to you, Mike. I'm going to stop my share and allow you to do your share from your computer. Oh, great. Let me pull up my slides here. Yeah. And Mike is coming to us from Texas. So you guys have got to participate and, uh, you know, 
keep this going because it's already two hours later there. So <laughs> that's funny. I, I like I didn't I didn't get a chance to put my son to bed. My son's going to bed right now. So it's yeah. like, you know, you see me rubbing my eyes and it's like, oh, it's kind of sleepy time here. So anyway, it's really excited to be here with you guys. Let me um, share my screen and present my slides here. So I'll pull this up. So guys, I, I do have a presentation. Uh, I actually just created this in the last few days. It took me a little longer to get together. So um, I, I'm not a polished speaker, but I speak a lot. I guess I do a lot of stuff and I, I kind of make up my, the, the, I guess the story of my life is I kind of make it up as I go along usually. So um, I want to just introduce you to me and a little bit of some of the things I do and kind of how I think about things. I, I've been a real estate investor for about four, almost 14 years now, and I've flipped hundreds of houses and now I'm doing a bunch of multifamily stuff. Um, but I really found that my joy is in serving other people. And so I've created some service businesses, some that Lori mentioned there that really um, allow me to spend a lot of time with other people. And so I will tell you guys, uh, this is not some presentation that I've got like perfectly scripted out to where there's no time for Q&A and discussion. I would love to have some discussion in the middle here. I, I don't I don't like to listen to my self-talk uh, too much. It's not it's not fun. So um but the topic we're going to talk about today is really just kind of getting creative. Does ever, anybody feel like, you know, it's just a weird time in our society, right? COVID and all the political stuff that's just kind of got everybody so polarized now. But it just feels like sometimes like whatever you set out to do is harder to get there. And, uh, and part of what I'm going to present today is that really it's the opportunity for you to get creative. I had, uh, I kind of am an advisor to a lot of people. They just kind of, people that are in my mastermind or other things just ask me, super random stuff sometimes that I've never even done myself, but I'm like, I have opinions on almost everything. So I'm like, well, it's up to you to decide that. Like here's, you could do, here, you really have three options, A, B, and C, like which one do you pick? And people are dwelling over these big things. And it's sometimes we just overcomplicate things. And we think that there's like an answer out there and there's no real right or wrong answer. You just have to decide and move forward. And so I found in particular in real estate, a lot of times people just get stuck on making a decision and it holds them back. And, you know, the truth is, is you could talk about like a garage conversion, for example, or something. It's like 50% of the people you try to sell to are going to love that you did it. And 50% of the people are going to hate that you did it. It do almost doesn't matter. It's just how can you, you know, obviously make the most profit and extract the most value and add the most value. But a lot of times we don't know what that is. And so I think what happens for entrepreneurs that have been around for a long time is you just get good at deciding. Like it, it's not that it's the right answer or the wrong answer, but it is an answer and you got past it and now you move on to the next problem to solve because that's ultimately what we are as professional problem solvers. So part of my presentation will be talking about how I've seen and how I've gotten creative to help you reach your goals here. And the theme of tonight is a lot of uh, that uh, life and business is a journey, I guess. And so that's why I kind of have a lot of slides here with, with roads on them, as you'll see here. So I wanted to share a couple quotes with you to kind of hopefully interact. Does that sound okay to everybody? I should stop and interact with you every once in a while. So let me pull up the chat thing. Um, and so excited to have you guys here. I'm going to pull up the chat thing so I can see you chat and I'll, I'll stop and answer questions throughout. If you have any questions or thoughts or words of wisdom, I'm, I'm a student uh, as well. So anyway, I wanted to share a couple of quotes with you along the way. And uh, this is one from Tony Robbins that said, the only impossible journey is the one you never begin. And I found um, as I'm getting, uh, we're not going to say any ages, nobody's going to date themselves here. But as I start to think about um, some people in my family, I'm starting to have um, some people in my family, my, my mom, for example, is having a lot of health issues, like really bad stuff. And there's no turning back from what she has, unfortunately. And honestly, I see a lot of regret. I grew up in a very blue class, working class, uh, blue collar working class family, I guess, in uh, in Illinois, actually, Lori is a, a fellow Midwesterner, although I've been in Texas for uh, like 22 years now. So, uh, but, um, you know, I just see a lot of regret, things that people in my family never did. And honestly, people in my family didn't really have a lot of money um, and they weren't able to do a lot of the things that they want. And so I really think it's important, no matter where you are in your life, to start making sure that you minimize the regrets that you might have down the road. And a lot of that for us as entrepreneurs and real estate investors is, not taking an opportunity that we should have because of fear one way or another. So uh, I've got a, another quote here. This one is, um, I'll just kind of show you here. This is from Abraham Lincoln. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And I, 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 uh, I guess I consider myself a creator and a creative person. I create a lot of things. 
And uh, I'll talk to you about my background here in just a moment. But when I was in corporate America, I was probably too creative for uh, <laughs> being an employee of somebody else. And that just didn't work out uh, as well as I hope. But now as an entrepreneur, I can do anything I want uh, as long as my wife says it's okay. So uh, that's kind of where we are with our lifestyle now. But I have a very supportive wife. She works with me in all of our businesses. And, uh, but there's some truth in that. Sometimes you get too creative and, uh, you, and you don't focus enough. And I've definitely been on both sides of that. So, uh, but, um, and I'm kind of saying here, creativity is the key to unlocking the life of your dreams. Now, I don't know if I'm, you're supposed to use quotes when you're quoting yourself or not, but I made up this quote. And so I'm quoting myself here, but I want to tell you guys a little bit about kind of my background. So I am what I kind of refer to as a corporate refugee. So I went to, I was really the first person in my family to go to college at all. Um, and um, went to college, have a degree in finance, worked in effectively corporate finance for a few years, um, maybe four years, and then went back to uh, graduate school. And, um, and because I, I wanted to reposition myself as something other than a finance guy and my finance jobs weren't that sexy. They were more like, you know, internal audit and stuff that is like the non-sexy part of finance. My wife, on the other hand, was a finance undergrad and she was an investment banker on Wall Street. So she was kind of on the sexy side of the business. And this was before we even knew each other, but I went back to grad school and uh, wanted to kind of reposition myself. And I did that and got out of grad school uh, in 2003 and actually 2000, September 1st, uh, September 11th, 2000, September 11th happened in 2001, like literally three weeks into my graduate school program, there were like 400 people there. We all quit our jobs to go back to school. And um, we went back and like everybody's coming out, going to McKinsey and Bain and uh, Silicon Valley, Wall Street, all these fancy jobs. And that just like disappeared, like when September 11th happened. And to the point to where half of, you know, at the time that I went into the program, people were getting, you know, five or 10 job offers when they were coming out to where when my class graduated, half of the class didn't have a job at graduation. So a very different economy, but that's how cycles work, right? But I did find an amazing job. It really was a dream job. I, I, without going into a lot of detail, I was effectively kind of like uh, the apprentice for a Fortune 500 CEO. I was his right-hand man and we're flying around on private jets doing lots of amazing things. It was really a dream job. It, and I was there for about three years. Now it ended abruptly uh, because he got fired in this political spat internally that there's a lot of politics in corporate America. And shortly after he left, well, I was his outspoken right-hand man. So I had to go too. So ultimately kind of, uh, because of nothing of my own doing, ultimately, um, I lost my job. Now that was a huge company with 35,000 employees. And that company is called Radio Shack. As you know, over the next couple of years, I was there, 35,000 people lost their job. And it was just this huge wake up to uh, call for me to be like, I'm seemingly on top of the world. Like literally this guy is a CEO. At the time I was probably about 30 and he is literally telling the board of directors of a $5 billion company that I'm, he's grooming me to take over as CEO when he retires in eight to 10 years. So it probably gave me a big ego, um, but it was just an amazing opportunity to, to kind of be behind the scenes and learn those things. So went from there into another, um, there's actually a, a kind of a C-level guy that was also at Radio Shack that left to run an online retailer in of all places, Washington, DC, where there's no real business other than politics, but this company was there and it had gone from a startup to about a $500 million a year online retailer. And so I came in when times were flying high and stayed there for about 18 months. Um, I ran a division of the company as uh, um, basically I was like a general manager over a retail division and we were flying high. I was making more money than ever before. Uh, my, my wife had quit her job as a consultant. She was making a lot of money, but really um, unfortunately kind of hated it. So I was able to like have her quit her job. Yes. We have to move to Washington DC from Dallas, which is not what we wanted, but, and then our son was born there. And then this company filed for bankruptcy. And I was like, okay. So my son was two months old at the time. And we went from flying high to, and, and I, I did leave on my own. It was just a matter of time. The heydays were over. So I knew the writing was on the wall. But we went very quickly from flying high to having a baby, uh, no idea how to be parents. My son, uh, who I just mentioned, we put to bed here shortly, he just turned 14. We still don't really know how to be parents after 14 years, but we're trying. At the time, we had no idea what we we're doing. 
and we had no income. Everything just kind of stopped, right? And so that was uh, kind of fall 2007. And I tinkered around with a few things for a little while. And I ended up uh, in early 2008, starting to get into real estate investing. We, we actually moved back to the Dallas area, which is where my wife's family is at. And we had kept our house. We actually had just rented it out. So realistically, my very first rental property was my own house at the time. I had no idea I would become a real estate investor, but I was always interested in that. And I think what had happened for me is that, you know, I was kind of, I had two strikes. I worked for two companies and lost my job, jobs that I really liked, but it was just this realization of knowing myself, I'm always a very, very hard worker. I always work harder than anybody else. Um, and that I have no control over my own financial destiny, my family's future, like whether we have health insurance or not, all these things. And I was like, I need to take this into my own hands without really knowing what that had meant. I'd always been kind of entrepreneurial, but had never uh, started a business before. And in fact, that's exactly what we did. So we, we kind of, I'll say we messed around for a few months trying to figure it out. And, um, and we were looking at the MLS and working with realtors and, you know, we didn't really understand the wholesale market and how all that works at the time. And then ultimately we ended up uh, buying a franchise with Homevestors, which is some of you know that Lori used to be a part of that organization as well. So I'm not a part of it anymore. I'll kind of tell you that as the story goes on here, but we actually hit the ground running. So at that time it was 2008 when the market was coming down. Now, where I'm at in Dallas wasn't nearly as bad as where you guys are in Northern Cal California or Florida markets or Vegas or some of the markets that had ramped up quite a bit. At the time, Dallas really didn't know, the Texas markets really didn't know what appreciation was, although the appreciation here has been amazing and really kind of crazy in the last three to five years. Um, highly unusual, but there's such an influx of population coming here that it's changed everything. So anyway, I was ended up being at Homevestors for about eight years, I guess, and uh, about a year into becoming a franchisee, um, the company made a bunch of changes and started allowing in what they call an associate franchise, which was basically, I became a developer where I would bring in people and uh, effectively sell them a franchise, teach them everything I know. At that point, I had done about 80 to 100 houses, so I had a lot of experience pretty fast. Actually, in our first year of, as real estate investors, we flipped uh I think 65 houses. So kind of unusual jump start, but we were, we had a little bit of a system to follow, which in hindsight, isn't that great, but we had, uh, we just been backed into a corner, honestly, with uh, losing my jobs, having a baby, moving home, really not having a lot of money. We were burning through the savings we did have. And so I just went after it. And I really applied a lot of the corporate lessons that I had learned. Um, so, um, Anyway, I ended up over the next several years helping build home investors nationwide. I added 130 franchisees uh, uh, directly that I coached and mentored, and I would get royalties on all their deals. My team was doing a thousand houses a year, so it turned into a very good business financially. I just didn't politically like the organization or where they were going. I really didn't believe in what I was selling anymore, so I ended up selling all that in 2016 and being completely independent. Um, a few years before that, as you see in 2013, I started a podcast called Flip Nerd, and I have a website, flipnerd.com. Um, we don't really do a whole lot through Flip Nerd anymore other than some uh, podcasts here and there, uh, but we did do, over the past eight years, uh, over 1,500 video podcasts, so this is just a treasure trove of content, and really what happened is my podcast for the first five or six years was interviewing experts, other experts, and um, a lots of people that are my friends now, people that are my master, my business partners, all started off as a guest on my podcast, and we just hit it off, and more things came out of that. And you'll see kind of that theme today of like, I met this person, and we had this conversation, and the next thing I know, we're business partners, and we're doing this thing together. And um, it's really brought a lot of joy into my life of being able to uh, work with people that um, have strengths that I don't have, or when we collaborate, like one and one is 11, as I like to say. So about four years ago, I started a mastermind called Investor Fuel. And uh, Lori is a member of that. And we have actually about 110 members um, that come from all over the country. And we meet quarterly and we do some other trips together, like going to Mexico, which Lori was with us last week and other things like that. I'll talk some more about that. And then a couple of years ago, I started um, I've been saying a lead generation agency. It's honestly become a technology and data company and our product is lead generation. 
Uh, but that has really taken off on like anything I've ever done before. And I'll tell you guys a little bit about some of these things. So that's a little bit about me. If you have any questions about me, I'm happy to, most people are always, uh, have a lot to say about themselves. <laughs> if you ever have any questions, um, I can clarify anything. But um, I should say back here on this last slide, I, I think it's a little covered up. I started investing in multifamily really in the past three years. And um, in, in the past 30 days, from, the, from 30 days ago, actually from about two weeks ago until about 60 days from now, uh, we're closing about um, 65 million in multifamily deals, and we just got a 25 million dollar deal under contract in the past week. And my partner is kind of freaking out, like, "Are we sure we can handle all this?" I'm like, "Let's figure out how to handle it." So um, anyway, uh, started doing a lot of multifamily because for me, it's now about building legacy. It's about building long term wealth. I, I'm not. When I first started, it was a it was really about survival. I mean, we weren't living under a bridge or anything like that. And I have some friends that were living in their car and they they hit rock bottom and they figured it out. Um, I didn't hit rock bottom, but we were at some lows. Uh, but it was about survival, and we have to we have to pay the bills, we have to pay our mortgage, we have to pay all these things. And it turned into now of I'm playing with the house's money and I'm playing the long game, you know, ultimately, and I can live the lifestyle that I want for the most part. And so. Um, it, it, sometimes I think when people have been in the business for a long time, I'm not saying any of this to brag. I, I truly love what I do now. I love the people that I get to work with. And sometimes people say it seems so easy. And I'm like, well, you know, there's this joke about, I say, I've been doing this for 14 years, uh, overnight success, 14 years in the making. Like it took a lot of hard effort to get there. Right. And, and that's the story you're going to have too. So I'll tell you, like, don't give up because you, sometimes you question is all this hard work worth it? And I think if you stick with it, it is. If you give up, it won't be because you'll never experience the very things that you hope to get in the first place. It just takes time. Like you can't pop a pill and lose 50 pounds. You can't try to flip one house and become retired. It just doesn't work that way. You have to just dredge through the hard times uh, to get to the good times. So um, today what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to kind of break our conversation up into getting creative and some things that I've done and some things you might consider doing. And I've broken it into um, four main areas, talking about deals. Uh, we're talking about single family and multifamily a little bit, uh, how you can collaborate. And I'll just tell some stories of how I collaborate with people. Um, lead generation is the lifeblood of our business. So I wanna talk a little bit about lead generation and maybe understand a little bit about what you guys are doing uh, to generate leads. And then the importance of wrapping a business around the lifestyle that you want to live. I think what's real easy is for the business to overtake your identity and it becomes who you, who you are. Um, and if you get to a point to where you feel that way, you just have to step back and look at it and know that our business is a tool to help you live the life that you want to live, be able to provide for your family or any of the things that are important to you. And it's not the other way around. So your business needs to serve you. It's real hard for it to turn the other, it's real easy for it to turn the other way for a lot of people. And if it does, you just have to realize that that's a season and you got to recognize it and find your way out. So we'll talk a little about lifestyle and I'm going to use myself as examples in a lot of these things because um, that's my story and I want to share it with you guys. So does that sound, everybody, does that sound good? We're kind of cranking here. So uh, again, I, I'd love to have some uh, discussion here. So if you have any questions or uh, any words of wisdom, I'm always looking for wisdom. So we'll talk about deal flow a little bit. So um when I first started in real estate investing, if I'm being honest, the first year, year and a half that I was a real estate investor, and we were off to the races pretty quickly, um, I, I didn't really, you know, social media wasn't, I'm totally dating myself, social media wasn't as prevalent then. Um, there weren't a lot of podcasts. In fact, when I started my podcast, there were only like five other real estate podcasts. There's probably 500 now. Um, and there, there, were, um, there were clubs like this. There were, there were RIA clubs around. That's really primarily how people socialized. Um, and, um, you know, at the time I felt like, and, and I will say one thing about that is you tend to be dealing with just local people. Like you're, you're going to a club in your market, like you guys are here. It's an amazing thing. I, it ended up changing my life going to a club because I was a sponsor uh, early on and I met a lot of people. But up until that point, um, a, a very distinct point about a year into my business, I just, we had our heads down in a foxhole and we just ran our business. And I say, we is my wife and I, it was always my wife and I, and we had a couple of employees, but they weren't really our peers. Like we didn't socialize with them per se. They were, 
they were just there to get the job done. And, you know, I, I'm, I guess I've probably have some more business wisdom over 14 years than I did in, certainly in the first year, but um, I never thought about collaborating or sharing my knowledge or any of those things. And it really took me being a part of a RIA club, like you guys are here in this amazing club to meet other people and to start opening my eyes to collaboration, like finding ways to work together and doing deals together. And there's a lot of opportunities for multiple people to be involved in a deal and everybody makes money and everybody wins. Um, and at the time, I think some of it was a bleed over from my corporate days that was very cutthroat and just like a dog eat dog world. Um, and I tell you from that point forward, it just was a lot more fun. I started doing coaching. I started collaborating with people and wholesaling people, my deals and vice versa, because it just didn't fit my criteria or their criteria, or they're out of cash right now and they can't rehab it and they have to wholesale it. Or there's a lot of different things that make sense for people to work on deals together. But if you have an attitude that, you know, I've got to do this and it has to be all me, I can tell you it's a lot more fun. And ultimately you'll make a lot more money if you uh, can find ways to work with people, especially if you have a skill or you have something that enables you to kind of play that role. It could be you have money and so you can fund deals. It could be that you have time, but not money and you can find deals. Like there's a lot of ways uh, to work together there. So um, in, in your market here, this is my shot at a San Jose area neighborhood. Lori, I hope I did a good job. I pulled in some local pictures there. Uh, I found that on the Google. That's where I got this from. But you can partner on deals. Like I happen to know Lori just shared some deals that she has. And she, I know she works with a lot of folks out there. Now your market uh, is particularly um, more appealing to work with people because the deal values are so high in markets. You know, property values have come up quite a bit in Dallas where I'm at, but there's still a fraction of the average house of uh, the San Jose market or kind of the Bay Area where you guys are. And so almost like multifamily, there's more opportunities to work together because the deals are just that much bigger, right? And um, I don't do new real estate investor coaching anymore. I've done a lot of it, um, but uh, there were always ways to collaborate. I can add value to new investors by showing them the things that I know, connecting with the contractors that I know. I mean, I could make it look easy for somebody that is new to this just because I wasn't new to it. I've been doing it for a long time. And the benefit that I would, that I could get out of it is, you know, maybe we, maybe somebody brings me a deal that I didn't have otherwise, and we find ways to partner together. And so um, there's a couple of ways that I share here that you can partner on deals. And that's if the, there's a lot of ways, but the two most common ways are either finding the deal or funding the deal are the two common ones. And so I know because she shared a couple of them up front with you guys that Lori has deals that she's looking for partners on. So in your market, you should, if you're not already working with Lori or she doesn't even know that you are interested in partnering on deals, like you should talk to her. And so, Lori, do you want to, can you want to maybe chime in? Can you share some ways sure. you work with folks in your market? Sure. So um, right now we have um, coaching students where, you know, I'm pretty much marketing and finding the leads with Jeff's help. And then our coaching students go out on the buy calls and because it is a hard market where just about anybody could list the property. I mean, there's always people that won't list, but they could, um, you know, people are stuck on their number. And so we work with them in creative ways. We offer to buy their houses, usually at uh, market values, perceived market value um, with seller financing, for example, we have a, a property up in Novato. It's a duplex that we bought, uh, seller financed from a tired landlord. And that particular property is worth a million dollars, a little bit more than a million. And we got it under contract, seller financed for $850,000 at 4% interest only. So our monthly payment on it is $2,700. The rent on the property is $5,200. You know, and that's just going in being creative. And that's an opportunity. Let's say, you know, you're looking to place some money. Maybe you've got some IRA money or um, some money sitting on the sideline. We partner with people who are looking to get returns on their money on deals like that. You can come in with that money and that would help us renovate or even add on a unit. In addition, we're always looking for people to be our cash partners so that we can go in with that cash offer um, you know, 
Mike, we're, our prices around here are kind of high. So, you know, you got to have a, a few a few dollars to rub together to get that cash offer out there. And we have limited resources when it comes to, you know, doing that. Right now, we have nine properties that are in rehab right now. So, you know, in order for us to keep buying with our students, we do want to have some people that are looking to fund our deals too. Yeah. And I think you'd agree with me, Lori. I, I've coached a lot of people and I've had people, for those of you that might be listening right now that you don't have a lot of money, you don't have access to money, um, finding deals in the single family space is, is probably the best skill. Yeah. Right? In multifamily, I'll share about multifamily in a little bit, but yeah. in multifamily, um, that person usually gets about 10% of the deal. It's not as big of a deal because raising money and <laughs> managing the construction, all that stuff is so much more important. But in single family, finding the deals is a, is a very key role. And out of a lot of people that I've coached, I've, I've found people that came in that were hungry, but they didn't have any money. And those that were, that had access to a lot of money, but they just weren't as hungry, partly because they had access to money. Um, I would choose the hungry person all day long to help, to help find deals and work hard. Because if you want it bad enough, there's an opportunity uh, to get, to get involved. So don't let lack of money deter you because finding deals is honestly finding money right now is easier than it's ever been in the 14 years that I've been doing this. Um, finding deals is harder than it's probably been in 14 years. And so don't, don't mistake that. If you have any questions on that, I'm sure Lori and her team would love to talk to you guys. Yeah. So, so Mike, you know, that's one of the things like somebody will find a deal and they'll be afraid to pull a trigger because they don't have the money. Right. Well, that's when you need to reach out. That's when you need to collaborate. And if you don't know who to reach out, reach out to me you know, and we'll see what we can do to put something together so that yeah. you don't lose that opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. You guys have amazing resources, Lori, for sure. Thanks. So I want to share with you guys about multifamily. Um, this is a deal we closed on two weeks ago. Uh, it was really cool because we were, I was having an event that Lori was speaking at and this three-day event, 250 people were, were there. It was amazing. And we closed the deal while we were there. Uh, well, and I, honestly, I, and I, I did nothing. I have a partner in this that was kind of running the ball. I helped actually, have, I helped raise a lot of money, uh, but that was done before this event. And then just to find out, hey, we just closed. Uh, it was really cool. Um, so this, and I'll just kind of give you an example here of one of the deals. This is one of four deals we're doing this year. This was in Georgia, uh, 197 units. It actually is two separate properties that are about a mile apart. I don't remember the exact rig. I think one of them is like 80 something units and one of them is like 120 or something. Um, and it's $13 million purchase price. We had to raise 5.6 million is actually a high percentage, but that's because we had a lot of CapEx going into it, a lot of improvements that we were gonna make. Um, there were four partners in this deal, general partners or lead partners. And then there were about 30 investors that invested uh, in this. And I put my own money in, I helped raise several million dollars for it. And the rest is history. It's such a cool thing to be doing these big deals. Now we actually have, this actually is the smallest deal that, of the four that we're doing this year. Um, but when I first started, you know, in corporate America, even this dream job that I had, I mean, I never thought stuff like this was possible. Even when I was flipping hundreds of houses, I, I just thought apartments were kind of out of reach. And one of the cool things, like we just talked about on the single family side is probably even more prevalent in the multifamily side is a team-based approach. There's the people that are find, finding deals. There's the money raisers, which is usually can be multiple, multiple of those, there's the people that are managing uh, the property manager. Um, there's just so many roles that it's very much team-based and it's a ton of fun. And I've been able to, in almost everything that I do now, you know, it used to be in my businesses, I had to do everything because the businesses weren't big enough to scale for me to hire people or have other people to do that. And what I've kind of found is I have to scale my businesses to the point or do deals that are big enough like this to where I can play the role that I'm good at. And there's other people, there's enough meat on the bones or there's enough profit in the business to pay other people to do the things that I'm not good at or more importantly, things that I hate doing. And so I, I aspire for all of you to get to that point. I will tell you that I wasn't this way for a long time. And in the past few years, I've finally gotten here and, and I love it now. I love what I do because I do what I love, if that makes sense. So, um, so anyway, I just want to kind of share this recent deal with you. There's a lot of ways just like we talked about on single family and they tend to be the two most common ways tend to be uh, to get involved finding the deals or raising money. Uh, and even if you are like super wealthy, you still probably need to raise money. Everybody runs out of money at some point. Um, and so these are the two most common roles in the uh, multifamily side. 
I will say this on the, you guys have any other ideas? You guys following this at all? What are some of the ways that, that um, you can partner on deals we haven't talked about here? We talked about raising money and, you know, find, generating leads or finding deals. Anybody, anything that I, I'm sure I've missed some things. Anything else you guys want to share or discuss at all over here? Make this a little interactive here, maybe. Or maybe share some ways that you, yeah, managing the deal. Rehab management, yeah. Yep. yep, for sure. Yeah, it's not as easy as uh, most people would lead you to believe, especially if you're newer at it. So, and if you have that skill, like some, I, I've, I have a, actually my contractor that's rehabbed hundreds, uh, hundreds of houses for me actually came to Cabo with us last week. So I've, I've tried to get him in and he's actually become an investor and he does his own deals now. Um, but I just found somebody that I could trust implicitly. Like he literally is uh, just to be honest. And I know that my brother's not on this fall call. I love my brother. I have a closer relationship with my contractor than I do with my brother, just because we, my brother and I have lived apart for 25 years and my contractor and I have season tickets to the Dallas stars together and we vacation together. Our families get together and we just do everything together. He's just become like one of my very best friends. Um, and, um, so you never know where you're going to find friendships at, but there's a lot of ways to work together. And he still does all my make readies and all the stuff. And so we were chatting today about that. And I just, I can send him an address and it's just done. I don't have to even think about it. Um, so we talked about partnering with Lori on uh, single family deals. We talked about that on multifamily. I don't really have any place to send you, but I'm going to give you my email address. So please don't abuse that because I get a lot of spam already. But if you're interested in multifamily deals, uh, we're really looking for uh, credited investors. So you can look that term up if you need to. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in doing some multifamily deals, we're, we're raising tens of millions of dollars uh, this year to do some of these deals. And I, I aspire to start picking up the rate of the deals that we do. So you're welcome to email me if you have any interest and we can just jump on a call and talk a little bit more about what your goals are and how this is structured sometimes. So my email address right here. Um, I want to talk a little about collaboration. And so... You know, this is again in the early days of my real estate investing. I would have never thought about working with my competitors, people that I saw as like my competition. But an amazing thing has happened in, inside of my mastermind in Investor Fuel. We usually only allow, uh, we've changed it a little bit, but in a, in a market, we typically allow two members per market so that we're spread out across other markets. And we had uh, two people that were in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And they came in and lobbied to add this third person. And the whole reason I had a, a, a rule of two is I thought I was protecting them. And they're like, no, no, we really want this. We really like this person. We do, we do deals together. And then all three of them came in and lobbied to get a fourth person. And they're like, well, if you guys want them in and they're paying for it, like, who am I to say no? And it was like people that everybody thought were competitors, but they're friends and they do deals together and they, they live life together and they do all these things. It's just really amazing. And so I've seen some... I never think about, sometimes I say the word competitor and it feels a little weird uh, because I think there's so much opportunity out there for all of us that there's just a lot of amazing ways to start working with people or collaborating um, and everybody to win. And so I think it's really, um, it's really a cool thing. And I'll share some examples with you here. So you collaborate with other people in your market. Uh, Lori's done a whole bunch of virtual stuff with people all over the country like it's, it's pretty amazing what you can do. Uh, really the, the world is in the palm of your hand in terms of what you might want to do, but there's, there's so much opportunity to work with others. So we got a message from Christina here. So I'm new to real estate. I'm not sure where to start. I'm a newbie and just been trying to learn as much as I can. Um, so Lori, in your market, what, what, what advice would you give to Christina here about getting started? And I understand Christina, we, the thing is, is we were all there at some point. So, I mean, that, the best way is just keep communicating with everybody you know to find out if anyone is selling anything, if they have a situation where they need to sell quickly, easily, trying to find the deal. The other thing is continue to come to events like this um, where you get to meet up with other investors and join groups on Facebook. Yep. Yeah. And start to ask your questions. And sometimes you're going to feel nervous asking a question that sounds like a dumb question, but we all yeah. have quite newbie questions when we start. That's, that's kind of what, that's how it starts. Right. I always tell everybody, you know, one of the amazing things I, I I'm blessed. I'm, I'm very, very well connected in the industry. Like 
probably one of the most connected just because I run a mastermind because I've had a podcast for eight years and I've interviewed all these experts. So I'm very well connected. And I, I always say this, I don't know a single person out of the hundreds of experts that I know that came out of the womb flipping houses or are just doing it because their parents did it. Like there's been a couple that, oh, my, my dad used to have rental properties or whatever, but most of them found their way there after a job or another business or something else. And they pivoted and they found their way there. So this is not, there's no skill that people are born with as real estate investors. It's, it's something you learn and you just have to put one foot in front of the other uh, and learn that way. So thanks for sharing that, Christine. But there's a ton of resources out there uh, for sure to learn how to get started. And there's some great books, you know, that you can read. But um, ultimately, it comes down to an operations a business of how do I market and run operations. And basically, it's marketing and sales type business, ultimately. So um, there's a lot of ways to collaborate. So lending, uh, we've talked about that a few times. You could be the lender on a deal. You can generate the leads. There's a lot of ways to generate leads, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. Um, you could represent somebody as an agent. You know, uh, there's a lot of agents. I think there's this kind of merging of investors and agents right now that's happening at a faster rate than ever before. It used to be very distinct. It's like somebody's an agent. If you were an investor and somebody would say, oh, you're an agent, you'd be like, no, I'm not an agent. I'm an investor. It was like these distinct categories and they're really kind of coming uh, together pretty fast, honestly. And some of that is because of um, new laws in a lot of states where if you're doing a certain number of deals or if you're doing any deals, you have to be licensed. Um, you'll probably see that pick up at a higher rate, I'm guessing. And there's a lot of benefits of, I actually, I, I don't often admit this in uh, publicly, but I actually got my license last year. It's a crazy thing. I got my license in uh, Michigan and I live in Texas. Why did I do that? Well, uh, I, I joined EXP and I, I, I do a lot of referral type stuff and I can get paid referrals uh, if I have my license. And so I know that I'm never actually going to list a property, but technically I am license. I technically checked the box. So, so uh, and I always said I never would, but here I am. Um, you can help with contractors, finding contractors. There's, there's a lot of value, especially if you're newer at meeting a lot of contractors and you can introduce them to other people that might need your services. And what I found is when I started to introduce, so I was a high volume rehabber. When I would introduce my contractors to other people that needed their services, they became way more loyal to me. So sometimes they'd be like, Hey, I'm, other people, it's taken me four to five weeks to get to them, but for you, I'm going to go do it tomorrow. And it's just because I had introduced them to people and I put some good energy out there that I'm helping you and you help me, we help each other. And um, that was a good thing. And I always advocate, you know, Christina just shared that she's new. What I would, what I would ask you, Christina, is as you start to learn and you start to achieve success, be willing to kind of reach back and help other people too. That's kind of how this industry should work. It doesn't always work that way. But uh, I feel, and I know Lori does, some obligation to help teach people other things because this industry and this business has been so great for me. Um, and I know it opens up opportunities for me ultimately too. I, I don't necessarily do it for the opportunity. Like, hey, I just helped you sell me a house now. That's not really how it works. But I know that if I do enough good things, more good things seem to happen uh, to me. And find ways to help Lori. I, I, was, uh, I have a business partner that I'll talk about here in a little bit. And he wanted to get into the industry so bad that he found somebody that he told him he would work for free until the person saw enough value in him to start paying him. Um, and now he's the largest wholesaler in his state. It's actually kind of amazing how that, how that worked out, but just find ways to help people and really not have an expectation of where that might lead. And, you know, there's this law of reciprocity. People feel like if you do a great thing and you're helpful, then they want to help you too. And so I don't know what that means, uh, but I'm sure Lori and her business is always looking for ways to help. And, and what, what folks like Lori and me like don't like is when somebody says, hey, can I buy you a $5 cup of coffee and pick your brain for an hour? It's like, well, uh, I'm worth a little more than five bucks, but, um, but if you just find ways to help people or add value and they, they maybe didn't even ask for your help, then people feel this reciprocity of like, hey, that was really thoughtful. I, I mean, we appreciate people that do kind gestures just because Unfortunately, in this day and age, it's it's kind of rare and it's sad, but it's the truth. So um, there's a lot of amazing ways to collaborate. There's a lot of things that can come out of it. Business partnerships, you get new business ideas by collaborating. Sometimes just doing, you guys ever have this where you like do something and it made you think of something like totally different 
but like solved a problem you had, even though they didn't tell you the solution, it just triggered something that made you think of something in a unique way. Uh, just amazing friendships. I've developed a ton of amazing friendships just from doing what I do, uh, but none of it was in the first few. I mean, I didn't, it's not like I didn't make any friends, but it's really been after the point where I started to collaborate with people and have my mastermind and add value and just give out free information and whatever it took, that's when all a lot of the stuff started to really kind of gel together and a lot of opportunities started to open up. Um, but it, it can't be, I just did one nice thing for somebody today. How come opportunity is not falling in my lap everywhere? It just, it just takes time to do these things. Um, you'll learn what matters to you. Like when you start collaborating with other people, like sometimes it sounds like an opportunity and you get into it and you find out, well, that's what I don't want to do. It turns out like you didn't really know, right? But it takes trying things to know what not to do. And if you're like Lori or myself, you start to find a lot of joy just in helping other people. And it gets to the point to where it's not all about money anymore. Like we all want to make more money. But uh, you can start to find ways to do things or collaborate with people that bring you a lot of joy as well, because people will, you'll hear people say things like that person is so awesome. They help me with all these things. And, you know, and if you're like the average person, that makes you feel good that you added some value to somebody. So a lot of great things that come out of it. I want to share with you guys just a couple of stories of how collaboration is, has ultimately changed uh, my life. So this is my buddy, Corey. We met at an event. Uh, a real estate event in 2004-ish was just kind of where I think that happened. And we were friends and his wife is, you know, if you know, if you know Corey, which probably not many of you do, and Lori knows who Corey is, but um, she's like the biggest person in the room, like voice wise, like, you know, when her wife's in, she's like, has this huge personality. Anyway, we became friends. We were friendly. I like that guy. We would see each other at events every once in a while. And then we started to become good friends. Uh, and then four years ago, he joined my mastermind investor fuel. And this picture, by the way, is my what that's Corey's to the left there. I'm obviously the guy in the middle. And that's my wife, Lindsay. Uh, and Corey does a lot of jeeping in Arizona. So that's that's a Jeep trip. Um, and he joined my mastermind. Uh, we were pretty good friends. And he joined my mastermind from the very first event, which we're actually right at this month. We're at our four year anniversary. And our relationship just kind of became tighter and tighter to the point to where our families travel together now, or my, our spouses travel together. Um, and now we've done over a hundred million dollars in real estate deals together in the last about two and a half years. That's including the deals that are closing here over the next 60 days as well. And so it's kind of gone from, we met at an event or at a club similar to here and just became friends. He was really an apartment guy and I was a single family guy. But he pulled me over to the dark side, as I like to say, and started doing more just bigger deals, right? And so, but it all started with just meeting together. And honestly, I don't know if it was even in the room at the event. It was probably like at the bar afterwards, just talking about what's going on and nice to meet you and things like that. And so it's amazing how these relationships uh, can pay off. Lori, I'm sure you have some amazing uh, people that you know now that started with just some casual uh, meeting right at, at, at an event somewhere and it's turned into something bigger than that I assume right like you and me <laughs> yeah do you, do you know where did we, where did we meet at the first time do you do you know uh was it collective genius maybe yeah I think maybe. it was one of those events I don't yeah. even know if at the time you were part of it or you were just coming in to speak about flip nerd I think you were looking for people to interview or something like that yeah maybe so, I was one of the the very beginning people of that, and I had my radio show, and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny, just like this. Sometimes you don't really remember. It just yeah. you, you have a friendship with somebody. You're like, I don't even remember how we met, but I know we had several interactions, and it just went to another level. And so, I'm sure a lot of you have um, some things like this. And I would tell you, you know, uh, even at your club there, like I think just getting together, whether it's virtual like this, it's obviously easier to network when you when we start doing in-person events again, but just ways to get together. I would even encourage you, some of you on the caller, I don't know if you guys do this. I used to do a lot of things where I would, I call it rehab live and I would invite people. So this is when I was a sponsor of this uh, real estate club here in Dallas. I would invite people to come watch us rehab a house. And I would just set it up as like, come to the house three times, right when we close on it and we haven't done anything, we haven't even cleaned it out. It's like in all its glory, it's all its disgusting glory. You're going to see it and then come back and, you know, there, there's a, we can probably rehab houses faster here than you can in Cali just because there's 
less permitting issues and less bureaucracy, although it's getting bad here too. But we typically, foundation issues aside, which is a common thing here, we could rehab a house in, in three to five weeks pretty, pretty, uh, pretty typically, um, certainly back in those days. And so, you know, come at the beginning, come about two or three weeks later, and then come at the end. And we just sit around and talk about it. And it was a way to meet people. And all of a sudden, people would say, oh, are you looking for money? I've got some money. I might want to lend on deals like this. Or if I find there was like a real estate agent, if I find a deal like this and we haven't listed it yet, would you buy it? It's like, yes, yes, yes. So you, all these opportunity comes up just from getting around other people and just kind of talking shop, if that makes sense. So anyway, this is my story with Corey. And I think I've got another one here. So yeah, so this guy here is uh, Jason Lewis. So this is, uh, I won't go into all the details, but this is a really amazing story. So Jason joined my mastermind. He lives in Salt Lake City. This is a guy that I said worked for somebody else for uh, free and uh, then took over the world pretty quickly. So he's a young guy, um, joined my mastermind. Uh, we actually had an event in Salt Lake City and he joined while we were there. He just saw somebody else post on social media and he like applied, which normally we're not, selling memberships while we're at an event it's usually like hey the door closed like two weeks ago but like he's here and we saw it come through and i had my guy talk to him and next thing you know he's just there and so um literally the very first day we met at dinner like that night when he came he we sat next to each other there's 100 people there there's probably 125 people there at my event and so i'm usually busy not not socializing as much as i would like because i'm kind of running the event too although i have a team to help and he told me what he was working on. And I was like, there was something that I was working on. And I kind of say it was like peanut butter and jelly coming together. It was like, he had some things that I didn't have. And I had some things that he didn't have. And they just gelled perfectly. And literally within a few months, we had launched what we now call the investor machine, which is our lead gen agency. It's really a data and tech company. And, and literally in the last 18 months, we've become the largest done for you lead generation platform for professional real estate investors in America. Like we just, it's just blown up and we've grown 250% this year and we'll probably triple in the next year. Like it's just on fire right now. And that's all from just these random meetings of finding somebody and talking and being like, wow, we've got something here, let's go. And so, uh, but you have to be on the lookout for opportunity too. I think I say a lot of us as real estate investors and entrepreneurs, we're just in the opportunity business ultimately. We're always looking for ways to add value or ways to solve a problem that other Sometimes it's what we have, but sometimes our problem is like, wow, a lot of people have uh, that same problem. So maybe we could serve them too. And then there's this woman, you guys all know, uh, Miss Graymont here. This is a picture, a recent picture of Lori. I'm sure she probably says, why did you use that picture? Anyway, this is the one I grabbed. Uh, and we've been friends for, for many years. She's in our mastermind. And we've actually spent I don't know when the last time we saw each other up until a few weeks ago, Lori, but we've actually been uh, kind of at the same events for the past uh, three weeks before this week. So now, uh, and honestly, uh, me speaking here has been planned for like five or six months. It's been a while. It's been on the calendar for a while. Yeah, but well, I, we, put you, we put you on the calendar last year at family reunion for this period. Okay. <laughs> And then all yeah. of a sudden we're together, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So the past three weeks, I had this event called Million Dollar Meeting. It was an amazing uh, event. And Lori was one of, uh, we had about 20 speakers there. So she was a speaker there and, and spent a few days here in Dallas. Then the very next week, we both flew to Tampa to go to another event that we're both a part of with a friend of ours. And then last week, uh, I took a bunch of our Investor Field members with us to Cabo and she joined us there. And we had, we had like 28 people there. Uh, was, last week so uh, yeah, and then well, here we are so I don't know if we have, what we have planned for next week Lori, but I, I don't think there's anything on the calendar right now but I, I don't um, know your wife might get a little jealous here <laughs> yeah, she's good but you know um the truth this is the truth is Lori and I talk all the time about ways to work together right and and I, I say this I have you know probably a dozen friends I have a lot of friends but I have probably a dozen friends that when we talk we're like we haven't cracked the code on how we're going to work together yet but it's just a matter of time before we do. And uh, Lori is one of those people. So it's been awesome spending some more time with you here, uh, Lori. Yeah, I appreciate it. This is the meeting that we had. I wanted to share a couple of things with you guys. I don't want this to be overly all pitchy, but I do have a couple of opportunities that I want to share with you guys. So, uh, and these are like real big opportunities. So, so make sure you listen up. So this is the event we had. So Mike, yeah. before yeah. you get into this, I just want to make sure that my listeners know that 
when I went to this event, how impressed I was with the attendees in this event. Like everybody in the room was doing deals. So it's not just one of those conferences that you go to and everybody's pitching. There was no pitching and everybody in the room was doing stuff. Okay, so yeah, now yeah. you can go into it. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you, this was the third year. We've done it once a year for three years. Um, and the first year we charged $3,000 for tickets because we really wanted only experienced investors to come in. The second year was last year. It was online. It was just a free for all. It was like, you know, it was a, a lot of great content, but the networking is just not the same at a big event. It was a three day event online. So it's, you know, we tried to find ways for people to, to network, but it's hard to do that online. And then this year was three times the size of the first year. And we had just a bunch of amazing people there. And some of it is we just, everything I do, everything you guys do, you get better over time, right? You do it once and you're like, okay, here's how we're going to improve it next time. And here's how we're going to improve the marketing. And here's how we're going to improve this and that. And so every time we do the things that we do, it just gets better every time. Like all, I do a lot of events. I host a lot of events, especially for my mastermind. And we have a meeting after every mastermind. And I have a notebook full of stuff throughout the event. I literally have pages that I'm filling on. What can we do better? And every time I think of it, like, why are we doing that? Okay, we need to switch to handheld microphones instead of lavaliers or whatever it is. I'm constantly thinking of how to make it better for our team and a better experience and add more value for people. And we just keep getting better here. So you'll see the picture here. You might know some of these folks here, but uh, you can see, well, I'm kind of right in the middle there. And then Lori's down here on the end. You can see uh, Lori Graymont there. And then this guy, Corey, that's got his thumbs up here. That's my partner that I told you I'm multifamily. And then over kind of like three o'clock is Jason Lewis. He's my business partner in Investor Machine. Um, and all these people are my friends. Like these are good friends. My Most of the people here are in my mastermind. And um, some of them are guys like Jason. Like most people don't know Jason, for example. And there's people, because he just doesn't really do much on social media, but he runs um, a wholesaling operation that does $4 million a year in wholesale fees. And he works out of a room in his basement by himself. He's completely virtual. His whole team is virtual. Nobody, he doesn't have an office um, and he does it all uh, out of his house. So pretty impressive operation. A lot of people that are like in Investor Fuel that know Jason, they think the world of him, but the outside world, you know, he's not uh, a celebrity, if you will, where people are kind of coming in just to see that guy. But then when they hear him, they're like, oh my God, I never knew this guy, but he's amazing. And there's a bunch of people in this group like that. So uh, a lot of, lot of amazing folks here. So what I wanted to share with you guys is an opportunity. We just announced it at this last million dollar meeting that was like two and a half weeks ago um, that we're going to do another one uh, in the spring, which we've never done before. So it'll be the first time. And uh, it's in conjunction with another event that we're uh, that Lori will be at uh, that's called uh, Family Reunion. It's really a marketer and coach uh, kind of event. And so what we're doing one back to back with that event in Tampa and I, I gave everybody an offer at Million Dollar Meeting if they were there. And I wanted to give you guys, that offer is actually not good for anybody that was there anymore, but I wanted to make it good for you guys uh, tonight. So it's called Million Dollar Meeting. Now it's going to be a two-day event instead of a three-day event. This is a Thursday, Friday in Tampa. It's really close to the airport. I can't even tell you who all the speakers will be yet, but I can tell you if you look at our website and see who the speakers have been for the last three years, it'll be an amazing lineup because it always is. Um, but uh, just for those of you that are in this club, if you're interested, uh, this is the link here. It's a little confusing because it's .co instead of .com, but milliondollarmeeting.co slash Lori. And then make sure if you check out, you'll see the prices there, but you will you can reduce the price on the checkout page by using the coupon code TAMPA. So I don't want to harp on this, so make sure you write it down real fast or take a screenshot or something. But I will tell you, um, we do have general admission tickets. If you use this code, you'll get the general admission tickets from four, I think it's 497 down to 297 or 299. And the VIP tickets, um, this code will take them from $1,500 to 999. So it'll actually knock off $500. This is, that'll be the cheapest that you'll ever get these tickets. Um, and so we'll make this good for like the next day or so for you guys to jump on it. So it's in Tampa, it's on the other side of the planet from you guys. Uh, but I promise you, I don't think there's a single person that left there. Lori can kind of corroborate this that said this was a waste of my time. Most people were like, this is was an amazing event, best event I've ever been to. I mean, uh, lots of great friendships and partnerships have come out of it. And that's really our goal. It's not just speakers. It's a lot of speaking and content. Nobody's pitching anything for the most part. It's not a pitch fest. Um, but we take these time to have these networking opportunities, a roundtable discussion so people can network and meet each other and share 
um, you know, opportunities to maybe work together. So I'm going to go forward on this page. Yeah, I just, I just want to reiterate that the value that's delivered in those days is amazing. And I know we had um, probably about a dozen people from our marketplace go to it. And I believe that they would collaborate, co collaborate the same. Yeah. That, I mean, everybody I talked to was like, wow, this is so amazing. I can't believe I didn't come last year. So yeah. Definitely. Yeah. If you guys do go, again, I don't want this to be like over, I'm not going to hit you over the head with a sales pitch, but if you go, it's a little more for the VIP tickets, but that uh, you, you're allowed to go to dinner with the other VIPs and with all the speakers that are there. And it's a very different experience than if you don't attend those things. So it's a little more uh, money, but the experience and the networking is very, very different. And I will tell you guys, because those that have been the past two years, they understand the power of this like VIP network that we have. So this past year, we had 250 people there, 110 of them were VIPs. Just because, I mean, $299 versus, you know, $999 is the offer that you guys are getting right now. Like that additional, you know, few hundred dollars is, it's kind of hard to put a value on uh, what you'll get exposure to. So, um, and for us, we just use it to pay for the event. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, we, we actually don't even make money on the events, but it introduces so much opportunity for us to find people that might want to work with us or other things. And so um anyway it's a great it's a great event we'd love to see you there if it makes sense so let me go forward so i want to talk a little bit about lead generation and we can make this a little bit collaborative too so what do you guys do for lead generation right now a lot of people do direct mail a lot of people do texting and cold calling uh there's a lot of things you can do but what are some of the things that you guys are doing right now or that you've done recently that are working for you You guys can um, just put that into the chat. Like if you're doing your own marketing, what is, what's working for you? I'll share for us, we're doing TV ads and direct mail and uh, investor machine. Yep. Oh, thanks Jeff for sharing the link on the million dollar meeting there. Yep. Um, I, I was going to share the, I was going to share the long link. <laughs> Yeah, I'll share the, the other links like a foot long. So we'll, I'll share that too. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but um, yeah, direct mail is pretty common. Thanks, Gloria. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, this is one of the things that I've kind of realized, and this is how all small businesses are. If you don't have leads or prospective customers that you're talking to uh, all the time, then you're not going to hit your goals. Like, it, it, and I, I usually, so I came from a retail background. I told you guys I worked for Radio Shack. Um, before that, before I went back to grad school, I worked for Neiman Marcus, which also is bankrupt now. I, I've got all these companies that have gone bankrupt. <laughs> maybe you shouldn't listen to me. No, uh, maybe I just got out in time. But um, so uh, I, I often think of things in a retail uh, situation. So if you think of a retail store, like let's just say even a restaurant, um, or let's just say, a clothing store or whatever, if they don't have customers coming in their door, that's a lead, right? If somebody is coming in, then they're going to browse around and some of them will turn into paying customers and some of them will leave and not buy anything. But if there's nobody walking in those doors, then they have no chance of selling anything. And for us as real estate investors, um, a lead for you is somebody generally that, that contacts you or that you engage with. And it, that might turn into an opportunity to go look at the house and make an offer. Right. And so we're no different than a retail business. Our widget is different. Our processes are a little bit different, but every business needs to be constantly talking to prospective customers. That's just how this business works. And I know a lot of people end up struggling with um, real estate investing because they can't find deals and deals are harder to find right now than they have been in a long time, but there's still plenty of deals out there. I mean, I have, uh, I run this mastermind investor fuel. I'll talk about a little bit with 110 plus uh, members and their partners. So our events will typically have 150 or 200 people at the event. And I can tell you right now, I can't think of anybody that's in our organization right now that is not having probably their best year ever. Now, for a lot of folks, maybe their volume is down, they're doing less units, but the, the profits are way up just because of what's been happening in the marketplace. Um, but uh, there's so, my point is, is there's still a lot of opportunity out there, you just have to know how to find it. And it all starts with leads, talking to prospects, people that need 
somebody to solve their problem. And then you have to hone your skill on being a problem solver for other people is really how this works. So lead generation is everything to this business. Um, and if you don't take anything away from our presentation today, know that finding deals is the hardest part of this business, especially in the single family space. So without leads, you don't have any, you know, you think of a funnel, you generate a lead and you talk to a seller, then you evaluate the deal, then you make an offer and then some of them will accept your offer. It's like a funnel. So it starts with 20 or 30 leads maybe, and it turns into one deal. It's different. That funnel is different in every market. Those numbers are different in every market and for every person, but um, that is how it starts. And so, uh, Christina says, what about paid websites that provide lists of properties? Uh, I don't know what lists of properties are. Sometimes people have, I mean, you could have a website, but then you have to drive traffic to it. And hopefully that they fill out your form, kind of back to the analogy of um, somebody uh, uh, coming in your store, right? Same, same type of thing. Sometimes there are people that are marketing, other wholesalers that might be marketing properties. And you say list of properties, maybe that's other properties that are available. Sometimes there are deals there. Um, those are usually wholesalers that are wholesaling the deal, which is totally fine. Just know when you buy from a wholesaler, you typically are gonna have to take ownership and rehab it or keep it as a rental. There's, there's often not enough meat on the bones for a wholesaler to sell to another wholesaler to sell it on uh, because wholesalers shouldn't and generally don't leave that much meat on the bones. So hopefully that answers that question. So again, generating leads is the hardest part of the business, but entrepreneurs always find a way. I, I just told you a bunch of folks are having like their best, uh, their best deal, their best year ever, and um, uh, their best year ever that is. And we just find a way. Like the, the market changes, and we we change with it. You have to pivot. When COVID hit, I remember our whole community. I was so afraid for everybody because I thought that this is going to be like some big downturn that came out of nowhere that nobody expected. And we started having like two online meetings a week, which is unusual for us. Just keeping a pulse on what's going on. Don't be afraid. Your, your friends are here to help you. And we just kind of came together. And next thing I know, everybody's businesses are just taking off. They just started doing appointments over Zoom and like figuring out how to make things uh, work for each other. And that's just what we do as real estate investors. So we've got a couple of things here. We said, uh, hey, Delisa, yeah. Lisa was there at Million Dollar Meeting. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, door knocking. Door knocking can work. Um, and take on, uh, what's your take on direct mail versus robo texting or voicemail messaging? Which is a question for Kevin. So all these things can work. I will tell you, there's a little bit of pressure on texting and cold calling right now. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. Don't take legal advice from me, by the way. Uh, not saying that you should or shouldn't do it. A lot of, I, I know a lot of very successful people that are doing it at a very high level. Like they literally have sales floors where they have eight or 10 people that are cold calling. And I know some people that won't touch it with a 10 foot pole right now and everything in between. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing with direct mail, which is super cutting edge in just a second. Just know that there are some, um, there's some new laws around what you can and can't do. Of course, people are confused as to what it really means or, whatever. So leave it up to the government to create some law that nobody really understands how to interpret. Right. But just make sure that you try to stay safe. And if people ask to be removed from the list, take them off the list and don't keep calling them. And, you know, just make sure you understand what the um, uh, it's called. To, the act is called the TCPA act or something like that. So just make sure that you understand what that is and that you stay safe. One of the great things about direct mail, which we're going to talk about here in a second, um, is that the government's never going to shut that down. Like they need all the revenue they can get with the post office. Um, and so we just got back uh, from this trip to Cabo that we talked about here with, with all of our friends last week. And whenever we, we were gone for a week, whenever we come back, we always have this like huge stack of mail. And, um, and I was just joking with my wife about it. We had a couple packages because, you know, the Am Amazon Santa comes every, almost every day at our house. And we had all this mail and I went through it and I literally, it was like a stack, like, I don't know, eight inches high of magazine, not magazines, but like solicitation, like, you know, ads, like, and lots of just junk mail. And I think out of that whole stack, there was maybe one real piece of mail, like a bill or something that we had to do something with. The rest of it was just like straight to the uh, recycling bin. But um, that's just how the world works these days. And so, um, like I said, we always find a way. So I'll talk about that here in a second.
Uh, most people are often find, looking for solutions for themselves. And that really is how a lot of uh, entrepreneurs thrive as they figure out something that they need for themselves. And they're like, wow, what if I provided this for other people? And that's ultimately what we did with the investor machine. So I want to talk about uh, what we do there. Now, I want to share what we're doing because it's very cutting edge and even tell you how you could do some of these things yourself. We do have a service if you realize how much work it is and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to do that. And that's why we're working with Lori now. Um, and it's a lot of, it's a really a lot of amazing things that we do, but I, we're so open to sharing with people exactly what we do. Cause we know it's a lot of work. The average person is like, can you just do it for me? Like, I don't want to do that. Um, but back to my friend here, Jason Lewis, who's my business partner, uh, that we talked about earlier. This is my partner in what we call the investor machine, which has really become a tech and data company, but our end product is done for you lead generation for real estate investors. And so we really pride ourselves on having better data. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, just marketing like clockwork. And a lot of real estate investors uh, don't do that. They like do something and then they get busy. And a month later, like, oh my God, I forgot to do this thing. And so they're really inconsistent with their marketing um, and trying to find ways to get to sellers before anybody else even knows that there is a distress situation going on. That's really uh, kind of the crown jewel of what we built here. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about data. So who, who in here, and maybe you could chime in, who is like pulling lists now and doing things like that? And maybe tell me where you're pulling lists from. And that'll give a little context of what I'm going to talk about uh, here. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what I call broad data. And that is stuff you can download from like list source or listability or prop stream or sources like that. And I just kind of gave away some of the source that I was hoping you guys to chat in, but um, is what I call broad data, very, very high level data. It's less expensive. Uh, it's easy to get to for the most part, but it has very high level data that doesn't really indicate distress. It has the age of the seller, the age of the property, how many square feet is it? Are they an absentee owner or not? How long have they owned it for? How much equity do you estimate that they have? and kind of high level stuff. What's the size of the lot, which is important for you guys because in your market, the high dollar markets like yours, a lot of the ways to add value sometimes is to add on square footage. And so high level data like that. So then what we do is we go into the county courthouses and we literally have a team of about 75 full-time data miners right now that their whole job all day, every day is to go into uh, county courthouses where our clients are all over the country and get this data. And it's we go after about 40 different lists, but it's things like probates, tax liens. Uh, there's all sorts of liens that are probably 15 different liens that we try to track from IRS liens, mowing liens, so all sorts of different county taxes, city, city liens, things like that. Uh, we go after eviction notices, arrest records, recent divorce, um, water shutoffs. Like there's a lot of different things that we are able to find that are findable like you could go do this but when you realize that we do it every day and every week like clockwork and have a very systematic approach to it you realize that um you know it, it could become a full-time job for you just to get this data and then what we do is we built um software uh to kind of do list stacking on steroids so let's just say we have a house on 123 main street and we know it's an absentee owner and we know they lived there for 20 years and we know that they've got a lot of equity. Um, then we start to stack on these data points and say, hey, a probate is worth five points. A mowing lien is worth one point. And we start to add on these distressed points and it effectively allows us to score every property in every market where we operate. And uh, the reason it becomes so valuable to real estate investors is because we can actually minimize who you're marketing to because you're only marketing to the most distressed of people in that market. And we just equate distress to most likely to sell sometime soon. Um, and then from there, uh, the third thing that we do is we allow, we have a system um, in our software where you can log in and create effectively what we call buy box, your buy box. So that's ranking the zip codes where you want your marketing to go to or not. And it's, uh, if you're a rehabber, you know, there's some parts of town you prefer to be in than others. So you can score every county and lots of different criteria, age of the property, age, size of the lot, size of the property, 
um, et cetera, a bunch of, it's about 15 different things that you can score. So we really try to take your marketing budget and get super efficient by only marketing to those that are the most distressed and the types of houses that you want to buy in the first place, the type and the parts of town that you want to buy in the first place. And so we really have, I don't want, I hate to say like a laser approach versus a shotgun approach, but kind of somewhere in the middle, like buckshot, if you know what that is. So, um, and uh, that's really our approach. And then it's completely done for you. So we manage the direct mail. We print whatever you want to print, postcards and letters. We handle all the printing and mailing, and we just drop it like clockwork every week. The mail, the mail is released from the print house every Friday. It hits approximately Tuesday, although nobody can predict when the post office delivers things these days. Uh, but we just try to do it with clockwork precision so that your marketing is just happening all the time and you don't have to think about it. You just have to pay the bill every month, essentially. Um, and we're integrating some stuff with AI. I won't get into that. We're doing some, you, uh, for those of you that are in uh, San Jose, you probably, some of you on this call would probably love to go deep on this, but uh, some really cool things with um, AI where we can, um, you can connect your phone system if you use like CallRail or another system too. And we can actually start to score the quality of the calls you have and go back into our software and change the data. Uh, pretty crazy stuff actually. So there's a bunch of stuff that we're working on where we're pretty innovative. And we started doing stuff like um, when these new distress points pop up, we can skip trace them for you and deliver them every Monday so that you have a list of phone numbers to try to contact uh, from people that have just had something pop up on the radar at the county courthouse instead of, you know, some of the services, I don't take anything away from the services that you mentioned like prophecy, but some of those, honestly, that data is, by the time it hits there is often many months old. And so sometimes the house is sold already. Uh, pretty common that that happens actually. We're getting to it before anybody even knows it should be on the radar. So this is these are the types of things that you could be doing. You can go pull your lists. Uh, if you find out how to get these lists, I will tell you that we create a training program in every market for every list. We have somebody that goes in and creates a training program for how to find each of these lists. And then they hand it off to, we have a, a team that that's all they do is create training for every list we can find in every market where we operate. And then they hand that training off to somebody that actually does it every day. And so um, you could do that, right? It's just a lot of work to do. I mean, ultimately the price, the cost for us to do it is way cheaper than, than it would cost you to hire somebody to do it. And so that's where kind of our value comes in. Let's see here. Um, yeah, so I talked about, we kind of do the real-time property scoring. We actually do some things where it's kind of uh, the 80-20 rule. So the very top of the list, we mail monthly and kind of the 80%, the bottom 80%, if you will, we mail every 60 days. Of course, it depends on your budget. Um, and we drop things every week, just like clockwork. Uh, and we do as much stuff as we can kind of real time. Like when you, for those of you that send mail, you know, you inevitably get a bunch of return mail back and now you got a, a box of return mail to deal with. Well, what we do is we actually are so large, I always send millions of pieces of mail a month, is that we have a relationship with the post office and they send us spreadsheets of the return mail that's going to, that's on its way back to you. So we can remove it from our list before it ever even gets to you. So you can just throw it in the trash because we've actually removed it from the list for you. And that's fairly new, like 60 days ago, 90 days ago, people still had to type it into something and let us know so we could upload it to our software. Um, so we're always looking for ways that we can add value uh, and ultimately save money um, by being super efficient. Um, and I talked about, yeah, I just talked about this getting to distressed data points before anybody else. So as soon as we get these data points, we're able to deliver them to our customers and say, hey, this person just filed probate like in the past four days, here's their phone number, like go call them. So we've just found that as the market gets more, like let's, let's be honest here, what's happening in the market place is it's it's just getting more efficient and the people that are throwing spaghetti at the wall and doing things the way they did them in years past if they're not evolving or working with a provider that's evolving then um they're getting left behind and so you have to kind of stay on top of uh on top of the market uh if you're interested in uh talking about this so there's really two things one is you, you can talk to Lori. Lori is uh joining us and she has some opportunities to work with her on this uh, if you want to talk to us directly, you can go to this uh, link here, theinvestormachine.com slash Lori. If you're interested uh, and you're on this call, I would advise you just maybe talk to Lori first and um, because she, it's a little bit of a long story, but we have some ways where we're going to work together 
and you can work kind of through Lori if that makes sense and she can kind of help you as she's offering to maybe fund people's deals or find other ways to work together back to the collaboration that we talked about so um there's some opportunities there uh let's, anything you want to say about that Lori I don't know if I, I kind of glossed over it at a high level but no, I think um, the best thing is just to, to reach out to me and um, see what you know your needs are and then we'll plug you into the right system. Yep, awesome. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go on to talk about lifestyle here. So real fast, uh, Jeff asked a question about accredited investors. Do you have a good source? So, you know, I'm not an expert on this. I am raising a lot of money now and I've done a lot of it through, I have a, a list and a network of people that I'm just that have been following my podcast or whatever we have people that register on our site and just kind of reaching out to people for the first time ever and saying do you, would you want to invest with me in the past I've had coaching available and I've had my mastermind investor fuel and I've had an investor machine which is relatively new but I've never said do you want to work with me on deals and so we started to do that and people started to come out of the woodwork which is pretty cool so I think you know you just have to have the, the best way, I always say this, the best way to sell, to build your buyers list, if you're a single family investor, is to have a deal for sale. Because everybody's like, hey, who wants to be on my buyers list? And people have kind of caught on to the point that they're getting on a bunch of lists for people that are never actually probably going to do a deal. And so the best way to really get, uh, get access, uh, build up your buyers list is to have a deal for sale. The people can actually come look at it and they, you know, they're going to give you their, they'll gladly give you their email address if you have a good deal. So same thing on multifamily. When we raise money here, the best way to do it is to actually have have a deal or have deal flow coming in, um, and you know have built up a reputation somehow to where people know, like, and trust you at least enough to like look at the deal and learn more about it, right? And then you can kind of see what the. So Mike, if there. people have interest in your multifamily deals, um, how do they get how do they get their information to you? So the best thing is just to email me. It's Mike at flipnerd.com. Okay. Yeah. And As there's a process. You know, the SEC has a process where we need to get to know each other a little bit. We learn about your goals, find out if you're accredited and things like that. So we could have a couple of conversations and just see uh, if, if we have similar goals and um, as we get new deals, I can kind of share. We'll kind of put you on our VIP list for multifamily deals ultimately. And um, that's kind of our process. Perfect. At this point, almost everybody we work with are people that I know just because I've built up so many amazing relationships uh, that um, it's just, it was like a natural next step. Or I have a good friend, you know, there's a guy, that, for example, that's in Investor Fuel and Investor Machine, and he does 100 houses a year himself or more. Really talented guy. He's actually one of the guys down in uh, Cabo with us, Lori. And next thing I know, his dad just retired and his dad's investing with us on all of our deals. Like literally, he's like, I want to put a half a million dollars in every deal you do. We're like, okay, that sounds good. Uh, but I never would have met his dad on my own. It really took me having a relationship with this person. And so, um, all right. So let's talk a little about lifestyle design. So I talked about this up front. And, um, you know, what I've kind of found is when we first started, I, the business had to make, I mean, the businesses always have to make money, right? But it just got so focused on business that kind of the personal side of it, the lifestyle side really took a, a back burner. And honestly, you know, if you guys follow Gary V or anybody else, there's, there, there is this season of hustle that you might have to go through. I don't prescribe that you need to hustle your face off as Gary V says, that's not really, the, the goal is not, should not be to hustle. But if that's a season you have to live through to get you to the next step, then so be it. That just is where you have to be. I've been in the hustle season before. I know Lori's been in the hustle season before. And so you just have to do what you have to do, but don't make that the goal. The goal should be to live the life that you want to live, whatever that might be for you or your family or, you know, real estate investing. We have a good friend um, named Matt Andrews and he, I, I've, I've ripped off his quote so much that people are now saying that it's my quote. And I and actually were at his event and they're like, this is what Mike Hambright always says. And it was Matt Andrews event. I was like, no, that, I got that from Matt. I stole that from him. And the quote is real estate investing, uh, real, estate, real estate isn't the thing. It's the thing that gets you the thing, right? And I think Lori would agree with me. When I first started, honestly, I loved real estate. And then I realized that I don't really love the real estate. I love what it does for me or what it has the potential to do for me. And so 
Um, I, there's a lot of things that I enjoy about real estate, uh, but, and I love the transformations. I love all that stuff. I love doing deals. Don't get me wrong, but it just becomes very transactional and it starts to become a little monotonous, honestly, but it does amazing things for us and for our families and our communities and the people around us. And so that, that, so you have to make sure that it's the thing that gets you the thing. And I'll, um, I'll kind of, uh, say here that I think it needs to enable you to live the lifestyle that you want. There were times where I couldn't have imagined, uh, you know, traveling as much as I do. And like this summer, my wife and my son and I moved to Colorado for six weeks in the summer. We were just able to set up shop out there and work as we needed to, but we used it as an opportunity to get away. After 2020, we're like, we need to, we need to escape. We were supposed to go on an Alaskan cruise that was like on the bucket list of things we wanted to do, but it's got, it got canceled two years in a row. And we're like, okay, let's go do something big and bold. And we just went to Colorado for six weeks and it was amazing. And now we're talking about, we should do that every year. <laughs> Why not? Um, but I want to share a little bit about my lifestyle and, and things that I do now that seemed like a dream to me, but I found a way there. And now it's just part of my life. Like I want to do these things. I want to do life with these people. And, um, and everybody's goals are different. I won't tell you what your goals should be. Uh, but I think all of us want to have more, not all of us, but probably a lot of us want to have more travel, more leisure in our lives, more opportunities to hang out with the people that we like and friends and family, people that we love, right? So uh, this, this literally is the past, uh, over the past year of my life, uh, I was able to go snowmobiling and dog sledding in Yellowstone. We went off-roading in Moab with friends. We went hiking in Arizona, uh, hiking in Beaver Creek, Colorado, which is next to Vail. Uh, this is this literally this picture is where are we at? This is Tuesday. This is five days ago. This is in Cabo and deep sea fishing. Lori didn't make it out on this trip with us. There, there's a I'll say we had like 28 people with us. There were like five suckers that raised their hand and said, "Yes, I'll get up at 4:30 in the morning to go to the marina to go deep sea fishing." But this is a mahi mahi. Uh, well, it's called a Dorado, but the fish, if you order in a restaurant, is Mahi Mahi. So we ended up catching five of these, which is really cool. This was literally five days ago. This was last Thursday morning. We got up and went fishing uh, while we were in Cabo last week. And this is not all of us. Uh, some people were doing other things that night, but uh, this is our group here. Let's see, I think I put an arrow. Yeah, there's Lori. She's kind of hiding back behind the hat there. Um, and uh, it was it was a lot of you know a lot of great friends getting together and there's me over on the side there and my wife next to me, but this was we had dinner outside one night at the steakhouse it was, it was just a beautiful night, and this is this is what I want to do with my life is I just honestly um, part of it is my son's still in school but if that wasn't the case in four more years it won't be the case like I'll do more of these things I this is what I want to do this is the life that I wanted to build so I would encourage you guys whatever that means for you to design your life that you want and invite others in. And I've just found a way to kind of merge my lifestyle and the things I want to do and business. And, um, you know, when we get together as entrepreneurs and all these folks here are all real estate investors that are in my mastermind, uh, Investor Fuel. Um, when we get together, it doesn't matter if we're in a hotel ballroom or the hotel bar or a pool in Cabo or on UTVs in Moab. Every time we get a chance to talk, we start talking about business. That's just kind of what we do. And, uh, but we all have these common threads that bring us together. And so I, I prescribe that I think a lot of real estate investors and a lot of entrepreneurs, and unfortunately, just a lot of people these days are kind of lonely. Like it's, it's a lonely world out there. We have all these connections. We have cell phones. We can contact anybody in the world uh, at any time. We can connect on social media, but you know, I have 5,000 friends on social media. How many of them do I really know? Like, I don't know, a couple hundred, like they're not really friends at, per se. They're not people that are uh, there for me if I need them and I'm there for them necessarily. They're just loose connections, right? And so I think that a lot of people are lonely and there's a lot of people that have a lot of common interests with you uh, and with me. And I've just found a way to kind of do life together. Like we have common interests. Let's Let's hang out. Let's get to know each other because I can tell you as a real estate investor, as somebody that has been truthfully financially free for probably 10 years, I don't share these types of things that I'm talking with you about today, or certainly the things I talk to my uh, mastermind members and my good friends about in my neighborhood 
like at my son's, you know, lacrosse thing on the sidelines or whatever, like people just don't get the lifestyle that we live or they don't, they don't understand our business. A lot of people, if they have a W2, they just don't understand, like, you know, it'll sound like I'm bragging, but I'm just talking about, oh, we're going on a trip next week. Like, didn't you go on like six vacations this year? I'm like, and I feel bad. So I don't really want to talk about anything because I feel like I'm bragging. I'm like, I'm just sharing the life that I've built and I'm not trying to brag. I'm just matter of fact, saying what I'm doing. Um, and the only way that you can have those conversations that you really want to have is be around people like you that have like-minded uh, goals and um, like-minded, uh, you know, in a lot of ways. So I would encourage you to build a business that supports your life. So this is my mastermind that Lori is a member of called Investor Fuel. I just want to take a moment to kind of share what that is, like what is Investor Fuel? So it's, it's uh, I'll kind of, I guess I'll just read it here. It's a giving community of amazing real estate professionals that help each other build stronger businesses and better lives. Like our tagline is build your business, build your life, fuel, fuel your business, fuel your life. And it's, it's really because our businesses should fuel our life, right? And so um, we don't just talk about business. It's very common for us to be talking about how to pull themselves out of the business more, how to spend more time with their family. We've got people that are like having issues because they're so focused on the business that they're having problems with their spouse. And we talk about those things openly as a group because we've all faced those issues. And so it's a place where we can really get together and talk about things. So this is for professional real estate investors. It's not coaching. This is, there's people in our group that are doing as many as 500 deals a year. Uh, there's a guy, there's a couple of guys in our group that just raised $30 million from a private equity company to buy a house. I mean, we have a lot of really amazing people, but I'll talk about the groups here in just a second. We have four quarterly masterminds where we meet, um, twice a year in Dallas, once a year in Phoenix and next year, uh, once in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. And, uh, this is a picture from our last event. We actually was also in Nashville, but this is uh, most of our group. Sometimes people, we take the picture and they're like, oh, I stepped outside. I missed the picture. But uh, this is most of our group here at the Nashville event. Uh, lots of spouses, lots of uh, best friends that are partners, father, son, mother, daughter, all sorts of family uh, stuff here. So we've got just an amazing group of people from all over the country. Uh, we do three online trainings a year. In fact, today we had our accountability call uh, we do an acquisitions training call. This is John Martinez. He, he's like the leading sales trainer in America for real estate investors. And so he leads some of those calls for us. And we do role play exercises and things like that. And then we have uh, different rotating topics. Like we just had this one uh, about a month ago that was on SEO. And so we might be talking about pay-per-click. We might be talking about how to build processes and you know how to put together the systems or how to do this thing in your CRM. Um, it's just a rotating topic every month. We have an online community that's like super vibrant. It's a Facebook group, but you know, people can ask questions. It, people commonly ask questions and it wouldn't be uncommon for five, 10, 20 people to pile on there within an hour and say, here's how we're doing it. Give me a call and I can tell you how we're doing it. I can introduce you to this person. And so it's a very giving uh, community here. We have two or three of these retreats a year. And so that's kind of what the Cabo one was. We went off-roading in Moab. I shared those pictures with you and then hiking in Beaver Creek this summer just got back from Cabo and we have a trip coming up in Vegas. These dates have actually changed slightly uh, uh, just because we inserted that million dollar meeting that we're having in Tampa. Um, but we do uh, a few different events like this. We've done snowmobiling in Park City, skiing in other parts of the country. And we really, we really do a lot of just amazing stuff to get together and blow off some steam. Uh, access to my team. This is just a snapshot of my team. I've got some great folks on the team that add a lot of value. And then we have tons of discounts from sponsors. I had uh, an onboarding call today with a new member, somebody that actually was at Million Dollar Meeting and they joined Investor Fuel and Investor Machine at the meeting. And we had kind of an onboarding call with them today and uh, they have some rentals. And I said, you know, I kind of got a feel for the value of their rentals. And I asked them a couple of questions uh, for uh, talking about accelerated depreciation that you can actually do on single family. Now, a lot of people realize that. And we have a sponsor in our group. And I said, Literally, I'm going to show you guys how to save probably three to four hundred thousand dollars in taxes this calendar year just by sending an email and making an introduction. And they were like, uh, wait, what? That's going to like pay for our membership for like 20 years. I was like, well, that's what we do is try to add value. So um, so just to tell you the qualifications real fast, 
We have um, three different groups for our um, single family investors. We actually have a multifamily group now that I partner with uh, my friend Corey that I mentioned there. And so our goal group is for people doing 10 to 50 deals a year, typically, or have a rental portfolio. Our platinum group is for those doing 50 deals a year or more. And then we have a platinum plus group that's 100 deals a year or and up. Um, I will tell you, your market is very different. So we have uh, a member, for example, that is in the Bay Area that does about 15 deals a year. They actually moved up to our platinum group, but their average profit is like $150,000 a deal. So we take that into consideration because 15 deals in Tulsa, Oklahoma is very different than 15 deals a year in the Bay Area. So we take that into consideration. It really is more about what does your team look like? What are your challenges that you have operating at that level? Um, and then our cash flow group, which is the multifamily group, uh, basically is if you have a thousand doors or less that you control, then that's our gold group and a thousand doors or more, that's our platinum uh, group. And so uh, this is this this group has really just been started in the last six months. And uh, we partner with uh, uh, Corey, Pe Corey Peterson is my, he facilitates this meeting. It happens simultaneously. So we have our dinners and our breaks and our lunches are all together. And then when we get back in session, they go into the cash flow group. And so the cash flow group, uh, the gold group, uh, actually is for, it, it could be people that have never done a single deal yet, but most that are in that group had some level of success as a single family investor, and then they wanted to move into multifamily. Um, and uh, there's a lot of opportunities to work together, even on our deals in that group as well. So what I, what I decided to offer here, uh, because Lori's in the group and um, uh, we wanted to just make this offer here, that if you... Uh, reach out to us. So we normally charge a fee up front to join and we're going to knock that off 70% of the join fee. So just 30% um, to join us. Our next event actually is four weeks from today in Dallas, uh, four weeks actually in our gold group, for example, is four weeks from yesterday, Monday. Um, and so a little bit of short notice, but if you wanted to join you, the next meeting is in February in Phoenix. So you can just talk to our team about that if you're interested. And so what you have to do is uh, use this link here, investorfuel.com slash Lori. And it'll ask who referred you. Just put that um, Lori Graymont referred you in there. If you want to talk to us about that, we'd be happy to tell you more about it. But we've got a great group. Um, so we got a question here for Investor Fuel. Can the call list custom design for assisted living? That might be more for investor machine for the lead generation. Can we go after assisted living facilities or hotels? Is that, if that's your question, right now, we only focus on single family houses. We have a massive data set that we spend a fortune on um, and it has land and commercial, it actually has every piece of real estate in America in it. But right now, we're really only focused on single family, if that was your question. Um, I get asked all the time. We've got a friend that's a big note guy, probably the largest note guy in America. And uh, some people ask about land all the time. And so it's just not a big enough opportunity for us yet to spend development time building out that functionality. So we're really just focused on single family right now, if that, if that was your question. So... Uh, Go ahead and enter your questions into chat so that we can yeah. answer. Yeah, if you have any questions, I'd love to just kind of open it up and talk about, you know, anything, um, anything that you guys might want to talk about. Lori, I thought 90 minutes was going to be hard for me to fill, but. No, okay. you know, you get talking yeah. and it just happens. <laughs> I just looked at my watch. I was like, wow, that's crazy. So I appreciate everybody sticking with me for so long. I appreciate myself. I'm glad of myself for <laughs> yeah, so you guys have questions about collaboration creative creativity doing deals i know there was something in here about prop stream or freedom soft do you want to make any comments on those i think they were talking about where do you get your lists from um PropStream and FreedomSoft, yeah. FreedomSoft is a great program. Um, Rob's a good friend of mine, also in Investor Fuel. Mm -hmm. 
On your multifam, what kind of ROI or opportunities can you share? So uh, I'm a little hesitant to talk about that because I don't, there's like some SEC sure. know, promise like returns on that. Yeah. The way that we set up our, um, the way that we set up our structure is we bring on limited partners that have a, um, a uh, preferred return. And mm -hmm. then you get a chunk of the, of the back end uh, at year five, whether if we sell the deal, our goal is always at, at year five, we're either going to sell the deal or um, if it's appreciated enough, refinance the uh, limited partners out. And so, and we typically have a, a preferred return. So basically the preferred uh, equity investors get paid before we get paid. Like they have to contractually in our agreement, they have to get paid. And so after we get to know each other a little bit, we can talk about, I know there's like a gray area of what you can and can't say in terms of promising returns. And so the big thing is we really try to stick with um, accredited investors, people that have a net worth over a million dollars or are earning, I think it's $200,000 a year or more per person, maybe 300,000 if you're a spouse. We have to look up the exact uh, thing there. But anyway, we just want to work people that understand what they're getting into. There are risks associated with all this stuff. Um, we've never lost money on a deal, knock on wood. Hopefully we never do. We've had amazing success so far, but things could happen. You know, it's weird times. And so you never, you never know. Well, I, I think the biggest thing, you know, we're talking a little bit about creativity. The biggest thing is to remember that time is the offset to money. So if a market changes, the component that levels the field for you is time. Right. You know, you got to get creative in how to, how to stay patient capital. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. So I have a question here for you about, are you able to join uh, Investor Fuel if you're under 10 deals per year? I'd encourage you to just talk to our team. They can kind of understand your, um, your situation and whether we're a fit or not. We're, uh, there's really two things that, that we do. One is from your perspective, we want to make sure you can get value to grow your business to where, whatever your goals are. If you're close to that, we can talk about it. If your value deal values are way higher than because of the market you're in, then we consider that as well. So that'll have some consideration. That's from your side. From our side, we have, we, we literally, you can look, if you look on Facebook and just look up the tag fuel fam, uh, somebody coined that term like three years ago about our fuel family. Just so we use this word fuel fam. You'll see it's been used thousands of times. We're very protective of our family. So we want to make sure um, there've been a couple people that I, that I've actually asked to leave in the past just because they weren't really doing deals anymore. It wasn't really a fit. And people were like, you know, it's a little embarrassing. This person has to get up and talk about their business and they don't really have a business anymore. And so there's two sides of it. One is to protect the uh, quality of the conversations that we're able to have with our members. And two is to make sure that we can serve you because our real goal is to get people that come in. I mean, it's pretty common for us to have people come in and their business doubles or triples or better inside of a year and again, it's not coaching. It's just from getting in the room around the right people that they can ask questions to or say, how did you do that? Or what's the software you're using for that? What's the source of that list or whatever it might be? And so it's really the community that is, is helping each other out. So what is that saying that you're the um, product of the five closest people you hang with? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So it's up. The burden is on me. Uh, this is what I've kind of found. Like when I first started Investor Fuel, I probably had a little more ego. Like people were there, they wanted to learn from me because they I've been around for a long time. And very quickly I realized I don't want that burden on myself. And there's so much more value in the room. So now I just deflect all of that. I'm more likely if somebody asks for something, I was like, I have an answer or I have an opinion. And sometimes I, sometimes I'll share it, but I'll like, let me connect you with this person. And it's so much easier for me to be a connector of people. Um, that can learn from each other. And it's just taken on a world of its own. I shared all these uh, pictures of us traveling with people that are in the group and doing all these amazing things. But the pictures I didn't share with you, and there's a ton of them, are people that have become great friends and their families are traveling together. It doesn't even involve me. So, uh, you know, I'm left out of some of that stuff, which is, is awesome that it's taken yeah. on this whole life of its own. And um, there's just a lot of amazing friendships that have come out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I would encourage you, I, to just uh, talk to our team. Um, 
This is uh, some of my contact info here. I gave you guys my email, mike at flipnerd.com if you want to talk about the multifamily deals we have coming. If you're an accredited investor, uh, you can connect with me on Facebook or uh, follow me on Facebook. Uh, I am at my 5,000 friend uh, limit, so you just have to follow me if you go there, which is fine. Uh, or Instagram, which I'm not nearly as active on as I used to be, um, just because it kind of became a burden. But we do put content out there. Uh, and flipnerd.com is uh, uh, one website that I have where we have a lot of content out there, a lot of uh, over 1,500 video podcasts. Um, and I'll share with you guys a couple of the things that we talked about here. Yeah, here's my email address for doing multifamily deals and talking about that. Uh, the link again and the coupon code to use for joining Million Dollar Meeting, which is March 11th, uh, 10th and 11th in Tampa. Um, I do I do look forward to seeing you guys go to Florida. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, that's a great event. And uh, that hotel that we were at, Lori, with the, for the, for Matt's yeah. event, it's a beautiful, I've been there many times. It's a beautiful hotel. It's right on the water. Yeah. Uh, super convenient to a lot of stuff. And uh, the networking there is, will just be crazy. Like we, we really go out of our way to make, make sure people get together and network. And uh, this code, again, I'll, I'll make sure we just set this up for uh, this meeting. Uh, if you use this link, milliondollarmeeting.co slash Lori, and use that coupon code when you check out. It takes basically $200 off of the uh, general admission. It knocks the tickets from like 497 down to 297, I think. It might be within a couple of dollars. And the VIP, which is really the best way to go, more than half people there will be VIPs. If I'm being honest with you guys, we let our investor fuel members come for free as VIPs. And so the networking is just crazy because we have all these amazing people from investor fuel that are there. So I didn't, uh, they don't normally tell people that, but just know you'll get exposure to some amazing people. And we, we knock, uh, this coupon code will knock that price down from like $14.97 to $9.97. That's amazing, Mike. And we'll give you access to the recordings. In fact, if you buy uh, through this link, we'll give you the recordings for the past three years too. Like all of this content, um, it's just, it's kind of amazing. So that's Million Dollar Meeting. Uh, we talked about investor machine The probably the best fit on that is if you're interested is just talk to Lori because we're talking about doing something unique with her where she's involved with uh, a lot of folks in your market. And so if you're interested, you might be able to partner up with her instead of getting your own account. Um, and that'd be cool. And then investor fuel that we talked about here, uh, just you just apply. Basically, you apply, you fill out an application, they'll take you a couple minutes. And that is uh, at investorfuel.com slash Lori. Just mention Lori Graymont. And uh, we ask you who referred you and my sales team. I have a couple of guys that are on our sales team. They know to um, that if you come through Lori and you mentioned Lori, that we're going to reduce our join fee by 70%, which is pretty crazy. But um, so is there a virtual option for Florida? So I will tell you this. We did commit last year to do this year's virtual. What we do is we stream it on Zoom. And um, it's not, the networking is not the same, uh, but we will do that. I will commit to doing that again. I think we, I can't remember if I already did commit or not, but I will commit to it. So it's become easy for us to just pop up a webcam and, and broadcast it on Zoom. I will tell you that it's not as interactive. Obviously, most of the people will, will be there in the room physically, um, but in terms of getting the content, uh, we will commit to um, broadcasting that virtually. Awesome. Any last questions? Thanks for asking that, Adrian. That's a good question. I forgot to mention that part. Okay. Well, I appreciate you guys. I didn't want this to be overly pitchy, but I did want to share the stuff that I work on, which I love. And I think it's impacted a lot of people. Uh, and, um, you know, I think just having this focus on creativity and finding ways to make your business serve your life because yeah that's that's what it's there for i think we've all had seen some crazy things that have happened over the past year maybe lost friends or whatever and you start to kind of wonder what is this all for and i think this all has to be to live a richer life yourself otherwise why are we doing this stuff right so anyway exactly all right mike it was a great honor and thank uh, you guys thank yeah you. and i'll see you somewhere next week <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the trend we've set so far. I don't know where that's going to be, but um, anyway, I appreciate all of you guys. I wish you nothing but the best. Hopefully, you got some value from today, and awesome. uh, hopefully, we get a chance to see you sometime soon. So, thank you, Lori and Jeff, 
appreciate you guys for the opportunity to talk to your crew here. All right, everyone. Until the next perfect time, we'll, we'll see you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you.